Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I hope you had a fantastic day today. Great to see you. Now, thank you if you've subscribed to the channel. There's been a huge number of subscribers lately, and I really appreciate your support. It makes a huge difference. It's enabled me to take the channel from here to here to keep on making more videos. And I want to try and make those better, better quality and make more videos so you can learn more about EVs. And so we can help promote EVs to other people who maybe don't know about them. Now, Elon Musk has recently given his take on the pros and cons of different vehicle battery form factors. Now I'm gonna share with you his take, and then I'm gonna share with you my take, because they're slightly different, or at least my take has a bit more information to it. Anyway, obviously Elon is way smarter than I am, so let's have a look at what he said first. Now, considering what's been going on lately with battery fire recalls, with this kind of bad image the media has been painting about batteries spontaneously combusting, even though at times more likely to have a ice or petrol gas vehicle fire than it is to have a battery fire. The media still likes to sensationalize EVs that get clicks. And so they, they'd they like to paint this picture that EVs are dangerous because the batteries are spontaneously combusting. And well, unfortunately the Chevy Bolt hasn't really helped that image lately, has it? Now, that said, there are battery form factors that are safer than others, of course. Now, recently, Elon Musk shared his views on this issue on Twitter. Now, the way he did this was he answered a question on Twitter about different EV battery form factors and the use of pouch cells. Now, let's first have a look at what's going on right now in the market. Well, the two most popular battery forms right now in terms of attention in the media, not the general media, but I mean, I'm talking about places like Clean Technica, Electric, Inside EVs, all these different sites, the most popular types of batteries spoken about are one, the blade battery from BYD, which uses lithium iron phosphate battery cells and prismatic shaped cells. And the other most popular topic is of course, Tesla's 4680 battery cell type, which is a cylindrical cell, which uses either NCM chemistry, nickel, cobalt, manganese, or LFP chemistry in the cheaper models. Now Musk said on Twitter that Heat propagation, its technical term TRP, stands for thermal runaway pr propagation, seen in large pouch cells can be extremely high. And that's probably the reason why we've seen these recalls, these massive recalls from Hyundai and from Chevy with the Bolt, because there's been potentially this issue happening in these vehicles which have pouch cells in them. Now, he said probability of thermal runaway is dangerously high with large pouch cells. Tesla strongly recommends against their use. Now, I'm not sure if this is marketing, but I think he's being genuine. And the reason I'd say he's being genuine is because Musk is often honest to a fault. Now, some of you might be saying, no, he's not, he's a marketer. Well, I can tell you this right now. Think about this for a second. Think about it. Listen to me and think about this, right? Tesla right now, 90%, more than 90% of their vehicles come equipped with NCM chemistry cells. And when Musk was recently asked, what is the battery chemistry of the future? He answered that the majority chemistry, majority of vehicles being sold in the future will come with lithium iron phosphate chemistry. So of course, if he wanted to be to lie and say, no, no, you should buy our cars. Well, he would have said, what would he have said? Well, what we make right now, but he didn't say that. He said lithium iron phosphate. So obviously he's being completely honest and I think he's being honest here again. Pouch cells have come under scrutiny of late, of course, because of the Chevy Bolt and the recall related to a series of battery fires. Now, according to Steve Handley, the Bolt's battery packs are made up of pouch cells, which are essentially layers of cathodes, anodes, and separators that are flooded with liquid electrolyte and encased in a flexible polymer pouch. So the question is, is there a better approach to EV batteries or specifically to, to pouch battery cells? Now, the Twitter handle TeslaFax asked the question. So smaller reinforced pressure protector prismatic cells for iron-based cells, LFP are good and safe and steel cylindrical for nickel and iron are the overall design sweet spot. Well, apparently Elon Musk appears to agree. I'm not sure this is totally true though, but I'm gonna share with you what he said. now. Musk explained that cooling a cell with a larger form factor can be a challenge because the cooling loop to the center is a longer distance. Now, this high cooling loop makes it harder to prevent hot spots or heat spots. 
Then pressure and heat release from a large shell in a weak bag make it impossible to stop the whole bag or the whole pack from burning, he tweeted. This tweet here, where Musk, the question was, so smaller reinforced pressure protected prismatic cells for iron-based cells, LFP, are good and safe and steel cylindrical for nickel and iron are, are the overall design sweet spot. Well, I don't think Elon actually agrees with that because if he agreed with that, why would he have recently said to buyers purchasing base model Teslas and having the choice between either getting the NCM chemistry or the LFP chemistry, recommended them to get LFP. Well, obviously Tesla is using LFP chemistry in its current battery cells, right? Which are cylindrical cells. So if he's recommending people get those with LFP, then maybe he's saying actually LFP are better overall, and that's where we'll, we will move in the future. Now, I think that is the actual answer here, but let's move on. As you know, Tesla unveils its 46 millimeter diameter and its 60 millimeter length 4680 battery cells form factor at the company's battery day in 2020. And since this is a larger form factor cell than it's what it's using now, Clean Technica asked Elon if it would if it had to deal with heat propagation issues with the 4680 cell. Apparently he didn't reply to the comment, but he indirectly addressed the question by saying our new cell is 46 millimeters in diameter with a steel shell, and even that was a huge challenge for propagation resistance. Now, Sandy Munro talks about this issue, and he said that Tesla has changed its battery cooling mechanism. Previously, the batteries were cooled by placing the battery coolant tubes between the cell walls, so around the sides. The newer battery packs with 4680 cells will be cooled by placing the coolant tubes above and below the cells, an effective technique to dissipate battery heat. Coupled with the tabless design that reduces the cooling loop, Tesla appears to have discovered an optimal approach for battery thermal management in cylindrical cells. Now, of course, the question is, are cylindrical cells a better choice than prismatic or pouch cells? Well, there's advantages and disadvantages to all three types. Of course, let's just point out the fact, cylindrical cells, prismatic cells, and pouch cells are used by all different manufacturers. Now, BYD with its blade battery uses the prismatic cell and only the LFP chemistry. Now, obviously the industry knows right now that they are the safest battery type we have. BYD's done a range of tests. No one's called these tests into question. There's no one saying they're fake, that they've been made up. There's video evidence showing that obviously they're true. The battery has been pierced with a nail, been run over by a truck, They've been beaten up and they don't set on fire. So a huge advantage to BYD's battery is the fact that, well, they're very, very safe. Now, of course, the chemistry issue is an issue. The issue is with LFP provides you with a lower energy density. In fact, a much lower energy density. It's about right now, I think BYD's energy density is about 140 to 150, whereas Tesla's is about maybe 250 to 260 for its NCA for its NCM chemistry batteries. So there's pros and cons to NCA, NCM versus LFP batteries. But let's get back to this fact and just assess this for a minute. Elon has said he believes the future of batteries is LFP, even for Tesla. When he was asked the question, what does he think the battery chemistry of the future is? He said LFP. By the way, you fans of solid state batteries out there, he didn't say solid state. And I can tell you now, Tesla pays millions and millions of dollars to their researchers and to a range of different people to continuously research the most likely battery chemistries of the future to continually, they, they have more information than you can possibly even, than you could possibly know by watching videos on YouTube even for a year. So Tesla is well ahead of you. They're well ahead of me. BYD as well is well ahead of you and well ahead of me. So I think we should look at what they're both saying. They're both saying BYD and Tesla. I believe they're the two most successful companies, electric car companies on the, in the planet. That's, I think, right now, you can't really call that into question. They are, clearly. And they're both saying LFP chemistry is the chemistry of the future. And they're both saying that solid state batteries, nothing. They've said nothing about them. So that should tell you something. Now, in response to this article, which was a lot of what I've shared with you was on Clean Technica, in response to this, Paul Govan has said, funny in it how the author forgot to mention BYD's blade batteries whose many game-changing advantages have been widely reported. Excellent thermal stability, long range, long life, etc. Well, first of all, Paul, 
No, BYD's bad at blade batteries don't actually have a long range. None of them do currently. None of their current models on the market have a long range. They have a good range, no doubt, but not a long range. Good and long are two different things. So let's just make that distinction clear because to say they have a long range is patently false. Now, a long range, a good range for the price, absolutely, absolutely excellent range for the price. Now, will future BYD vehicles with the blade battery have a long range? Potentially, yes, but we haven't seen those yet. Now, he also goes on to say, what's more, the BYD blade cells were designed with recyclability as a high priority. In stark contrast to Tesla's cylindricals, especially the 4680s, which are designed to be super tough structural batteries. Read this quote from science.org new. Tesla's cells are unique, not only for their cylindrical shape, but also for the almost indestructible polyurethane cement that holds them together. See video, even Musk has described the BYD blade cells as a game changer. Well, Paul is unfortunately incorrect on a number of levels because the article he actually links to actually says that no one is planning on recycling lithium. That's what the article says. That's the main contention of the article, it says that no one is planning on recycling lithium. And it also says no one's planning on recycling iron or phosphate. So in other words, the article says that no one's planning on recycling lithium, iron or phosphate because they're all too cheap to recycle. So that article that he's linked to is bizarre and has nothing to do with his claims. Now, let's have it when we assess the question of will lithium be recyclable? Well, yes, it is. The article he links to is incorrect. It's actually not true that lithium isn't recycled. In fact, a number of companies, including JB Straubel, co-founder of Tesla, who started a new battery recycling company, which I made a video about. I'll put the link in the description below. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out. Has said that his company can recycle more than 80% of the lithium in Tesla's cells. So it isn't true that they can't be recycled. In fact, they can be recycled. And the co-founder of Tesla, who now has started a new company and left Tesla, knows what you can do with Tesla cells because he worked there, right? And he's confirmed that you can actually recycle the lithium and lithium is recycled. Now, it is actually true that iron and phosphate are not expensive materials and they're not currently widely recycled. So in theory right now, the only thing you would recycle from a BYD blade battery is the lithium. You wouldn't recycle the iron or the phosphate because they're not expensive materials. This I think will change in future. I think it'll be quite easy to recycle these materials and this article will be wrong. So this is a good reason why if someone makes a comment on the internet, even if they appear to know what they're talking about, you should actually assess the truth behind their claims. Do some research, do a few Google searches. You can find out more and actually come up with your own opinion rather than believing a comment. Now, this is what J.B. Strobel has said. He hasn't gone into the specifics of the company's recovery techniques for battery recycling, but he claims that it can recover between 95 and 98% of a battery's nickel, cobalt, copper, aluminium, and graphite and more than 80% of its aluminium. And that was said in the, on the 30th of November, 2000. However, he didn't mention anything about, of course, recycling iron or phosphate. Not that this matters. I think the main key here we need to remember is that 80% of the lithium in batteries can and will be recycled. And it's actually incorrect to say that lithium is too cheap to actually bother to recycle. Now, there's a whole lot of different articles online. If you Google this issue, you'll find issues like on science.org, they've written extensively on the drawbacks of EVs, why this is a huge problem for the environment and it's terrible and toxic, but they've only looked at the problems, not the solutions, the solutions that are currently being developed by companies like those started by JB Strobel. So I would advise you to ignore the naysayers and look for the people providing solutions because they are there and those solutions are only getting better and better and better. Now, to end with, let's have a look at the pouch cell. Pouch shells generally have a soft aluminium coating that allows for a more lightweight battery and depending on the use, an adaptable size and available space. This leads to flexible cells that can easily fit the available space of a given product. In terms of space optimization, this translates to between 90 to 95% packaging efficiency and increased density. So one of the advantages of pouch shells is increasing the density in terms of the packaging inside the pack, in terms of the amount of batteries you can get inside the pack. Of course, this lead can lead to overheating issues as well though. Now, there are actually quite a few benefits to pouch shells, but the main benefit that analysts see to the pouch shell is the fact that solid state batteries can only work with the pouch cell format. 
So some analysts say that as solid state batteries are commercialized with experts saying this will happen between 2025 to 2030, they will be embraced by the industry, meaning that these batteries will be adapted to the pouch format. So if you look at a website like adionics.com, they claim that the pouch shell as it's optimized and standardized to a standard size and that is then mass manufactured, that will bring down the price. And when that moves to st solid state, then that will of course take over the industry. And they claim that once these batteries are available and produced in a higher volume, that flat formats, both pouch and prismatic will be the most used, especially for automotive and energy storage. Now, what do I think will happen in terms of cell formats? What do I think the future are? Well, I think the most likely future are actually prismatic cells, those produced by BYD. I believe the blade battery will show to the world that it is a good concept, it works, it makes sense, it's affordable. BYD can already make their cars at the same price as ICE vehicles. So they're the only company in the world that can do that. They can make a car in either petrol format or, or battery format that is the same price. That is the reason why all of a sudden this year, BYD's percentage of vehicle sales with a battery in them have gone from about 40% last year to 88% last month. In other words, BYD is almost a pure battery company. Sure, they do make a lot of FEVs. That's included with that number, a lot of FEVs. But it won't be long before they're all EVs because, of course, customers are choosing EVs as their preference when they can buy them for the same price. So for that reason, I believe BYD, the fourth largest battery company in the world, will be able to commercialize this battery. And of course, they'll become one of the three largest vehicle makers in the world, meaning that it'll be a very popular cell type. In addition to that, we have to look at Tesla's plans for the future. Tesla plans to make in 2030, three terawatt hours of batteries. Now in stark contrast to Tesla's plans, Toyota plans to have 200 gigawatt hours of batteries. So in other words, Tesla is gonna have 15 times more battery capacity in 2030 than Toyota. Toyota is currently the world's largest vehicle manufacturer. Now, Ford, GM, their numbers are similar. They're a bit, a bit less than that, about 180 to 200 gigawatt hours. So it appears as though Tesla will be making probably at least one third of the world's batteries in 2030. Of course, Tesla won't be making those. CATL and Panasonic will make a huge percentage of those, maybe LG Chem as well, maybe BYD. However, those manufacturers will make the 4680 battery cell for Tesla, like I said, I believe with lithium ion phosphate chemistry because it's so much cheaper. So therefore, if we look into the future, BYD and Tesla plan to have enormous cell capacity. In 2030, they'll be two of the world's three biggest EV manufacturers. In fact, not just EV manufacturers, car manufacturers in the world. So therefore that would mean the prismatic cell is guaranteed to succeed with BYD and the cylindrical cell with Tesla. Now, as for pouch cells, it's anyone's guess. Who knows what will happen? Solid state batteries may take off and they may not. Who knows? We'll wait and see. Thanks for watching the video. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.